I'm going to learn how to roof. I'm going right to the top to learn with Big Top Roofing. What's the problem, Sue? I'm afraid of heights. We're out here. We're going to jump out of an airplane. You got me to skydive. Hi. What she won't do for a model is yeah. unbelievable. So, did the skydiving work? Are you still afraid of heights? I'm not going to lie to you. I'm Sue DL, and I'm on a mission to remodel homes, people, and myself. I'll try anything and everything, at least once. Roofing. You pull the shingles off, you put new ones on. Well, there's got to be more to it than that. So I'm going to learn how to roof. I'm going right to the top to learn with Big Top Roofing. Hey, Dave. Hey, Sue. How you doing today? I am doing well, thanks. How about you? Fantastic. Do I need to come up there? You sure do. Ugh. Oh, Dave, I am. Uh, I'm good. I think. I'm. Uh, Fantastic. I'm a little uh, nervous, a little nice excited. Nice to see you again. Good to see you too. We're going up there, aren't we? We are. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Very necessary to do a roof project. We need to get on top of the roof. One of good. the most important elements, though, in doing our roof work is to make sure that we're working safely. I'm all about so what that. I've got for you right here is a harness. Okay. We need to fit you up uh, with the harness. So what you're going to get to do is place your feet in here and here, and uh, I can help with the rest of it. Deal. So what we're going to do is get you hooked in mm -hmm. right away. And so what you're going to do is, is begin to climb the climb the scaffolding. Really, eh? Um, Dave, I got a problem. What's the problem, Sue? I'm afraid of heights. Really? Yeah. Well, I've got a cure for that. What? It's called face your fears. And how does that work? Well, what do you think about going skydiving? Are you crazy? I'm not jumping off a plane, let alone a roof. You think if I jump out of a plane, I'm going to be happy getting up there? Well, you'll be comfortable. I don't know if you'll be happy. O-M-G. David has convinced me the only way to get over my fear of heights, to get up on the roof, is to go skydiving. We are going to jump out of a perfectly good airplane. Yes, I'm going skydiving. I'm not going to lie. I might throw up. David, you're good. Because I don't know how you did it. We're out here. We're going to jump out of an airplane. You got me to skydive. It's called passive manipulation. Wow, you are a genius at this. So are you telling me that once I jump out of an airplane, I'll be fine to climb up on a roof with you? Absolutely. You sure? Ready to go. Really? 100%. I just have one goal, that's it, that's all. Do not have a heart attack. That's don't pee your pants and land. I think, so I guess that means I have I two goals. I can guarantee we're gonna land. Okay, perfect. Yes. Personal now, Dave, we might real as well. Deal. So, so pretend the door's shut like this, so okay. I open up the door. Yep, and I go, ah. <laughs> Yeah, and then so put your foot out here like that, yep. the other one right beside it. Okay. Cross your hands on your chest. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of scooch forward a little bit. Yep. Okay. You're and not gonna, gonna push me out. I'm gonna come back like this, and then I'm gonna kind of get up on my, it's hard to do because I'm not actually strapped to you. Yep. But I'd lift you up a little bit like this, mm -hmm. and then I'd put your head back, and then I'd go, ready, set, go, and then we'd go down there. As soon as you get out into the sky, I want you to try to do this. Okay. Knees and toes together, point your toes up into the sky. And where are your legs? I'm doing the same thing behind you, except my legs are nice and wide like this. Okay. So there's room for your legs. So I want my knees together. Yep, this is you. Okay. All right? Yep. And then after about three seconds of leaving the airplane, you're going to feel a tap tap on the shoulder. Bring your hands out nice and slow, just like this. Okay. Yeah, Woohoo! All right, David, we're all hooked up, ready to rock. Nice. Let's do this. Yeah. Woo! Yes. All right. I'm ready to go now. How about you, David? Are What she won't do for a model is unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. That's an amazing experience. For sure. Oh, hi, Sue. How you doing? Hi, Dave. So, did the skydiving work? Are you still afraid of heights? I'm not going to lie to you. No, it didn't work. Uh-oh. I'll try anything and everything. At least once. 
So what you want to do oh. is basically point it that way when you're trying to move towards your anchor point away from the edge of the roof, so okay? So keeping my rope as tight as possible. Exactly. Now when you let go of that, It'll stay. you're anchored. You sure? So then you're, you're being prevented from... Positive? It, most definitely. I promise? 100%, okay, yeah. yeah. This will prevent you from falling, okay. for sure. So in terms of doing a roofing job, really, I mean, the first thing you want to do is take the old shingles off the roof. Yep. Now in this case, um, this was a hail damaged roof, so you know you can see there's some pitting here and there yeah. on the shingles. And it's older too. It is. This is a T-lock shingle that hasn't been manufactured for quite some time. Yeah, for a reason? Long. Well, honestly, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's actually a great shingle and it does stand up to the wind, but I think from an architectural design perspective, people just don't like the look anymore. Yep. They more so transition to the sort of an architectural laminate shingle, which is what we're going to be putting on this roof. We're actually putting okay. a lifetime uh, laminate shingle on top of this roof. Wow, okay. so forever, this would be the last roof you have to put on this house. Well, of course, there's some limitations. Right, to any sure, warranty, you know, but that's the, the that's exactly. the premise. Because you know, so this go stuff... ahead and actually yeah. feel the shingles. What a shingle is, it's basically granules on top of a fiberglass or asphalt base. In this case, it's a, it's an asphalt uh, based shingle okay. or, or organic shingle. But you can feel, I mean, if you're yeah, it's your, rough. It's like a it's like a really rough emery board, yeah. right? So. My nails are really smooth as I clung to this to slide down here, yeah. <laughs> So any company that's out there saying, oh, we can we can shingle over top of your existing shingles, that's not true. If you want warranty, you need to go right to the deck and have a consistent solid substrate to fasten these shingles to. Okay, perfect. So Sue, what do you think about trying uh, trying some demolition yourself? Here? I'm in, Dave. I'm so you in. saw how I was doing it? Yep. Basically what you want to do is just kind of remove the shingle that way yep. and then put it behind you. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Oh. Do I want to stand on this or do I stay you, on the shingle? You can stand on this, but uh, one thing I would say is you can see the granules yeah. can actually be a bit of a slipping hazard. Yeah, no So doubt. that's something you want to be cognizant of when you're, okay. when you're working on the roof. Good enough. Okay. So go ahead. I think we've got an opening at Big Top. You know? <laughs> really? I think I'm busy that day. <laughs> Turns out David discovered a problem that had to be fixed before we went any further. So what's happened here, you can see at the eave's edge, is we've got water damage. And the yep. reason this has occurred is because the original installation of this roof, they did not use a drip edge, which is what we're gonna utilize. This may not be the situation with the entire roof, but this is a north facing slope. So it gets okay, a lot of- Exactly, the wind and rain is whipping under here. Yep. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna cut this out. Okay. And we're gonna put new OSB in there, okay? Cause that's rotten. It is, yeah, yeah for sure. Okay, so you'll replace anything that you find underneath that's it's, you know, it, it's garbage, right? basically, right? Most of, well, I wouldn't say it's garbage, but you know, in, in order to, to get a manufacturer's warranty, you have to be putting the shingles on top of a substrate that is a solid substrate. Okay. So in this case, we've got water damaged and somewhat rotted OSB. Yeah. So if, we, if we're putting a nail into that rotted OSB, it's not gonna hold, okay? Fair so then, you know, wind could take that shingle off and so on and so forth. So what we really try to do is overbuild, as I said before. So when we install new shingles, you know, we, we don't want them to ever, you know, blow off. So if this would have had the ice and water membrane and the drip edge, you definitely wouldn't see this type of uh, this type of water damage. You can see, I mean, it's just rotted out. So over time, I mean, you can imagine if the water is getting into the home, it's rotting out the uh, main walls in the house. Um, you know, you can see there's actually mold developing here. So when when doing your roof, if you're going to re-roof your home, make sure you get the right company and they utilize the right techniques and, and protocols for the installation. I'll try anything and everything at least once. It was about the first six inches of the eaves edge, which is the, the lowest portion just, just beside the eaves there. So what, what's happening is, is, is when snow and so on is sitting there, it, it, because of the adhesive properties of water, the water is actually climbing up behind the shingles. So if we institute an ice and water membrane, which is a sticky membrane, it sticks right to the deck, and then further to that, utilize a drip edge, it prevents that type of thing from occurring. So really, 
that having that kind of an issue though is very important and it's really important that you found it and that you fixed it before we carried on Most because definitely. that wood rot could just continue right that's right i mean there, you can see there's water penetration there uh, so besides rotting the deck on top of the roof the water can actually migrate inside the building and begin to rot you know for instance the the main support walls uh, go further and possibly follow a truss line and get into you know in, into the home further so say a person buys a new kitchen you know they, they decide okay we'll spend the money uh, to you know build this beautiful new kitchen but then they don't they don't uh, do their roof and first or pay any attention to it exactly right? exactly so I think that that kind of speaks to what you were saying about the, the roof being really the most important thing in our home but the last thing we ever think about well that's the thing in any renovation it's certainly the last thing people want to spend their their money on we don't for see sure it. it's not but pretty it's out, not out of sight out of mind yeah. for sure you can see here that we've got the ice and water membrane yep. okay underneath the shingles and then a starter strip and then further to that, that drip edge I was speaking about. So this type of an installation is going to eliminate those possible water penetration issues that we were talking about before. So that drip edge literally comes down and over, so exactly. it stops the wind and blowing the rain or snow up underneath as well, much as possible. Well, not necessarily, but what it does is, is, is it, it's engineered specifically to guide the water right into the trough. Okay. You can see here there's a lip. So as the water comes down, just because the adhesive properties of water, if there was no lip there, there's a possibility that the water could creep back up. Yep. But because we've got the ice and water membrane down and the drip edge, the water ends up where it's supposed to be, which is in the east trough. And of course, from the east trough, it goes to the downspouts and then, and then onto the ground. Back into your home. So beyond the ice and water membrane, which is 44 inches, we, uh, we use a synthetic membrane okay. lapped at six inch for the rest of the deck. Yep. Okay. So really what you're getting here is a high end installation where you almost have two layers of water protection. Is that code or is that above code? Well, it's, it's most definitely above current Alberta building code. Right okay. now in Alberta, the only requirement at the eaves edge is uh, double 15 pound felt, which we consider to be uh, not, not quite adequate, which is why we install you know, according to the manufacturer's recommendations for a high quality installation. That's another reason why we are Owens Corning preferred contractors is because we really overbuild as opposed to underbuild. We don't want to ever have to come back to your home related to a, yeah. you know, some type of a, a leak issue. So, okay, so you've got a, a couple of, of strips now that you, you obviously start at the back end and work your way up. The exactly, road. yeah, for sure. And is that just kind of the process? We just keep on going? Of course, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the reason we do that is you have to nail these shingles, of course, to the deck. And as you're working from the bottom to the top, you know, you're putting this, the next layer of shingles on, which is covering not only the, the, the shingle below it, but also the nails. So in installing this type of a laminate shingle, what, we, uh, what we'd follow the manufacturer's specifications for installation, so we're actually able to give our clients a true warranty. So we usually do a, uh, a 10 inch lap on this type of a laminate shingle, okay? And when installing, it's very, very important to make sure that you're actually getting or, or hitting the nailing line. And what this does is it just secures the shingle to the deck. And you can see when you're actually nailing the shingle on the, on the nailing line, it's actually nailing the shingle below it. So you're almost nailing every shingle twice, which is fantastic, especially in you know high wind Calgary, right? Well, the nice thing about this product, the True Definition product from Owens Corning, is that it's got a very visible nailing zone. Yep. Okay. That line also, across there. Exactly, and it's got this fabric embedded into the shingle. So what this uh, fabric strip does is actually improve the wind rating um, in such a way that it, it uh, prevents what we term blow through uh, in the industry. So let me just, let me quickly demonstrate here. So I'm gonna just put a nail into this shingle here, okay? okay. Yep. Now this would be most competitors out there in terms of the ability of the nail to hold down the shingle. You can see the surface area is about three eighths. Yeah. Okay. And really it's what it's relying on is just the mat or the fabric, or I should say that the fiberglass base and the mat to kind of hold it down. So very easy to take off, right? Okay. If we do the same test and nail into the, into the uh, fabric zone, you can see it's actually very difficult to take off you can see I'm straining yeah right so you know 
in essence, you could, you could consider that the force of wind, right? So Sue, this is a uh, pneumatic nailer. Okay. Pneumatic roofing nailer. Yep. So what that does is it's shooting an inch and a quarter nail, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's what we use to, to install this type of a shingle. So what I'll do is I'll grab you a shingle. If you want to just step a little further back, and then what we'll do is we'll set this up so that you can uh, that you can nail down this shingle. And you stagger so, everything as you go. That's along. right. So we want to be up between eight and ten inches, and yep. that 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 um, basically is in accordance with the manufacturer's specifications. You always want to install according to the manufacturer's specifications, so that there's no question about warranty. You've installed the product correctly. Here's your warranty. Okay. Very important. Okay, do you yeah. feel comfortable uh, I sure installing do. some shingles? You should, we're going to have to take them off. <laughs> you shouldn't feel you know very comfortable. how difficult they are. I feel fine. Everybody else around us? Well, I've got my safety rope and my, my glasses good. on. Do so you have I, a bulletproof vest? Because this is, this is actually a Kevlar. Oh, then you're good. Shirt, so you're good. good. You're good. Okay. So we want to so go two, two. So what we want to do two. is one, one, two, one, two, and one. Yep. You, you want to line the shingle, the bottom of the shingle up with the bottom of exactly where the laminate is, yep. lamination is, area is. Okay. And what this does is basically ensure that you're so you kind of hold it there the as you're straight. going. Well, yeah, exactly. So you kind of hold it down with your left hand yep. and then place your first nail right there, and then just ensure that you. We're good to go. Exactly. So and you're then straight. Do and then couple. one two. Oh. That was three. Or one but, two three. Okay. I failed math. A couple more. Sure. One on the end there. How come that's it's happening? Like rapid fire. I'd hate to see you with a, a machine gun. Yeah, you would. I'm not... Now you can see a couple of your nails are, are what we consider to be high. Or so all I'll of them? You... <laughs> let's let's say a few of them. Yeah. So I'll get you to bang down the nails that are high. A little more elbow grease. If you want to. There we go. Okay. <sighs> get some frustration. I thought out. I'd actually be good at this job, but clearly not. Good. Fantastic. Perfect. Hey, don't tell anybody, okay? That's a great Please. installation. That'll right be there. between you and I. Can I do one more just to prove myself? Absolutely. Okay. 100%. I'll try anything and everything at least once. So just again in speaking to high quality installation and what we consider to be good roofing practice, what we've done here is, is basically prepped a valley. Okay, so you'll notice that uh, in the valley there's a metal and, yep. and we try and color coordinate this to the, the color of roof that we're installing. Sure. But the reason why we install metal in our valleys is because a valley is the, is the point where two slopes meet and it seems like ice and snow and so on will sit there for long periods of time. So if you ever look around in your neighborhood, you see a roof with a valley, you'll notice that's the first point that really begins to dilapidate. So that's the reason why we put this metal valley down. Okay. Really what it does is just channels the water and, and the snow down the valley into the eavesdrop and then of course down on the ground. Makes sense. So in terms of the valley, and this is something you folks at home should consider when hiring a roofing contractor. I mean, it's one thing to see a job that they've done and it may look similar to a job that another company has done, but it's these kind of details really that will you know, determine the, the quality of the installation you're getting and the longevity of the project. So when doing a valley, it's, it's critical that we not only install the, the, uh, the metal valley, but then a starter strip with an adhesive here. So that when we, when we crop our, our shingle that runs into the valley, what we're doing is just ensuring that any water that does come down the valley is directed downward, okay? Mm -hmm. You can imagine if we hadn't cut that out and, and some water had come down the valley, it could actually begin to Oh, you know, work its that. way into this area. So okay. that's the reason we do that. How do we as a homeowner ask a company, hey, so how do you do your valleys anyway, mister? Well, it, that that is, I mean, considered good roofing practice and all companies should be doing that, what we call cropping the valley. Yeah. Um, in terms of in terms of being able to determine that, I mean, it's, it's not a bad idea. You know, if you have a company doing a job for you, hire an inspector afterwards for $300 to inspect that roof to make sure that the quality is there, that that company is in compliance with current installation protocols and, and of course, building okay. code. That makes sense. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna cut the valley as we go along because when these shingles heat up, they become very difficult to cut. And you can see we've used chalk lines here as well. And we definitely recommend the use of chalk lines just to kind of keep everything yep. straight and looking aesthetically pleasing. Because let's face it, you might not see your roof every day, but when people are driving by or, you know, other people are seeing it too. So you do want it to look half decent, don't you? Most definitely. And it, it's something I think people become more aware of when either they're purchasing a home yeah. 
or when they're selling. Selling, for sure. David, I want to thank you. You've actually helped me overcome one of my biggest fears in life. Fantastic. I'm really glad I was able to do that. Bring it's, you bring you to new heights. I, new literally. I can't believe that, well, I mean, you actually got me to jump out of a plane and then you got me up on a roof. Yeah, and you were able to expedite and, and, and finish the roof really nicely, yeah. I have to say, very professional. Okay, so David, give me four points that a homeowner should look for when they're hiring a company to come and roof their house. I know for you, number one is obviously safety. Most definitely. So yeah, in terms of the hierarchy, I would say safety is paramount. Um, and then uh, sort of down, down the line would be equally important, uh, quality and service. You want to make sure you're getting high quality products and a high quality service uh, in terms of the installation. And fourthly, I think you want to make sure that that company is giving you true warranty information, true, true warranty documentation, not only from their company, but from the supplier. Excellent. Well, I think that we did a really good job. And when I say we, I, I mostly mean you, but I think we did a great job on this roof. But uh, you have a test that you want to do? and Well, yeah, I wanted to uh, to do a water test, paying for a waterproof uh, roof. And that's, that's what we deliver. One of the things we like to do on all our roofs is just, especially if there's valleys, is just water test them to make sure there's no issues that will, you know, potentially arise in the future. Not that we think there will, but it's just kind of that extra step that we take. It's kind of also fun to watch the water flow down the valley. It's pretty, it's pretty relaxing. At the end of each job, very important component is making sure that we clean up yeah. any, you know, potential nails or anything that might be on the lawn. Mm -hmm. So uh, go ahead and. Uh, Why do I have to do that? Well, it's it's part of the uh, part of the training. We want to make sure your training is full scale. This is a giant magnet. It weighs like a million pounds. It's designed to pick up any little tiny pick, nails or anything like that. Oh, what have we here? Nothing, Dave. Was that money? Nope. Sue, I think that's my money. I think I fell out of my pocket. Just go do whatever you do. I'll just take care of this, Dave. Sue, I, th I, I think that's Dave, my money. Yeah, I'm sure you got stuff to do. Go on. Hmm. Well, consider it a bonus from the job. How about? Oh, okay, deal. There's nothing here anyway. <laughs> nothing to see here. All right, that's the end of my roofing career. For more information on this episode and roofing, visit facebook.com slash remodel it with her.